Do you want to feel like a nuclear scientist that control the atoms and bend nuclear power? Well, Satisfactory cover you with some interesting tools. In Satisfactory we have very simple switch that can turn power on and off. Nevertheless, you can create pretty advanced 200 IQ nuclear power control setups with a simple logic. And these setups are not limited to nuclear power only. Logic behind can be utilized in multiple ways elsewhere in Satisfactory. So even if you are still not yet at this stage of the game where you turn everything into nuclear wasteland of Chernobyl, uh, you still can get several interesting tricks out of this video. For your convenience, there are timestamps below this video, as well as separate community posts on my YouTube channel for the schematics. I am Foxy Shanks, and let's start with the power switch basics. Power switch is a buildable that can be unlocked in the MEM under Keterium Research Tree. That research tree is unlocked with Keterium Ore. It is pretty advanced stage and require AI limiters and steel production to be unlocked. The first natural solution with power switch is to turn on and off standalone factories and coal power plants. For example, space elevator parts are pretty conditional and their use do not really extend past a certain point. You can shut down production of space elevator parts to conserve power or simply to get back your resources when needed. Single power switch is pretty simple solution to a lot of production line situations. But once we start to work on several power plants or let alone nuclear power, you want more control. Even simple coal power setups wants more flexibility than simple on and off. As a second switch, a lot of players do in separate power storage for their water pumps to jumpstart coal power plant in the case of main grid power outage. And while it can save you a lot of headache with the coal power itself, dual switch setups still do not cover very basic things. Uh, in the setup like this, your coal power is only separated from the power grid, and it is still fully operational. To turn on and off your coal power, you are actually in dire need of the third power switch dedicated to shutting down coal extraction or transportation. Now actually let's think about the nuclear power as the place where you want a lot of flexibility and control. With nuclear control room setups you can learn a lot about the whole power switch flexibility that can be applied elsewhere. To produce nuclear energy in Satisfactory we need a lot of extra production to create things like actual nuclear fuel. Then we need to add to equation water and nuclear waste and after that we have the whole story with plutonium rods and nuclear waste recycling. And you need to account for things like aluminium, computer, nitrogen and sulfuric acid production lines. As you can see it starts to feel very daunting and there are many things that can go wrong. But trust me, in majority of cases you are pretty much covered with only 4 power switch setup. We need to divide nuclear power into production sections to understand where we need switch capability. There are nuclear power plants itself that I consider as a part of global power grid. You actually do not need to separate them from the power grid itself, simply shutting down fuel production is way more logical and clean solution for master switch. Next step is to understand water pumps and fuel production. It is easy to break it up into clean production lines, dirty production lines and water pumps itself, but on practice there is simply no actual reason to separate these production lines with 4 power switch setup. And trust me, in the majority of cases you are covered with 4 switches. So as the first switch you want to have your nuclear fuel rod production line separated from the main grid. Your nuclear power plant requires everything. It requires water and fuel rods. No water equal no power. No rods equal no power as well. So unless you stockpile on your fuel rods and do not load balance your nuclear power, there is no reason to separate your water pumps from fuel rod production. This is where you place your first switch, between the main power grid and nuclear fuel rod production lines. So as soon as you separate your nuclear factory from the power grid, you can now see your total power consumption for fuel production. And this is the exact starting point for your second power switch. In the case of the emergency and loss of power, you want to have ability to jumpstart your nuclear fuel production lines. And with the first switch you can see the exact numbers that you need for those power storage units as the backup power. Once again, just separate your backup power from everything, while also maintaining the connection through the switch to the nuclear factory power grid itself. 
As you can see, in the case of emergency power meltdown, you just separate your nuclear fuel production lines from the main grid and then connect your stockpiled power to fuel production factory with simple flip of the two switches. Just make sure that you have enough backup power to sustain your nuclear fuel production. Also, to be super weird, instead of the power storage units, uh, you can actually stockpile on package fuel, then have storage units to activate packagers to unpack your fuel and use fuel generators for backup power. I do not know why, don't ask me. Uh, uh, it just sounds really cool and just like diesel generator roleplay or something, but it's not really realistic and the amount of space that you need is kind of a bit insulting to be fair. <laughs> so, alright, let's go for something realistic, the third switch. There is very interesting thing about nuclear fuel. You can actually sink it into awesome sink. For the case if you want to shut down your nuclear power plant and work on something without ever looming the red of radiation, maybe you just want to wear the jetpack and not your hazmat suit, or maybe you have enough power and just want some extra tickets, or maybe you have issues with your nuclear waste and want to clean up the system without generating any extra nuclear waste. Well, for those cases, you can actually make very simple logical switch with the awesome sink. First of all, you need a smart splitter. It is also the part of the Kitirium research tree and if you have power switch you can easily unlock smart splitter as well. So, you place your smart splitter between your fuel rod production lines and power plant. As first split you are using any setting to awesome sync line. As the second split you are using overflow setting to the nuclear power plant. Then you separate your awesome sync from the main power grid with the power switch. In the case when you turn off the switch, awesome sync do not receive any power and with switch turned off, fuel rods would overflow and would go into the nuclear power plant. In the case when you turn on the switch, awesome sync receive power and fuel rods will stop overflowing and would go into the awesome sync stopping nuclear power production. And as you can guess, this will also stop production of your nuclear waste. And this is really important for your switch number 4. Maybe from the start, or maybe a bit later, you will get yourself the nuclear waste recycling setup. With several steps, you can produce plutonium rods from uranium nuclear waste. Plutonium rods can be synced or can be used for nuclear power. If you are using plutonium rods for the power, they will produce unrecyclable waste, but in way smaller amounts than uranium nuclear waste. And this is really, really important and the part where four switches actually come together. For the plutonium you do the same sync setup with the smart splitter and power switch as your uranium rod sync setup. And while majority of players would never actually use plutonium power to be like in zero nuclear waste category, for some that extra double power kick can be really useful to finish some colossal projects like final space elevator achievement. But even if you do not set up any extra nuclear power generators with all extra water pumps, you still have several cases where plutonium rods are quite helpful. For example, you have an issue with uranium nuclear waste or maybe stockpiled quite a bit of waste that need to be recycled while not generating big amounts of extra uranium waste. In this case, you can merge plutonium and uranium rod lines. You can can turn on uranium sink and stop producing uranium waste. But if you still need that extra nuclear power on the same level, you turn off your plutonium sink. That way your power plants will stop receiving uranium rods, while they will get plutonium rods instead. As a result, your nuclear power plant will actually start to burn your uranium nuclear waste, while actually generating way less plutonium waste in return. Obviously, plutonium waste is non-recyclable and you need to separate storage of your plutonium and uranium waste, but it's still a reasonable trade-off to fix issues. Other solution is when you do not need that extra nuclear power generation. Then you separate your nuclear fuel factory from the main grid. Then you turn on the backup power and turn on both uranium and plutonium rod sink. That way you will stop generating any nuclear power, but still will process that nuclear waste while not generating any extra plutonium waste. Obviously there is a catch to the separational mode. As you can remember, I recommend to power up awesome sinks with the main grid. If your main grid lose nuclear power, uh, well, awesome sinks will probably lose power as well. Of course it will render your waste recycling mode useless. For that reason you need some sort of extra fuse box in your power switch setup for extra flexibility. So in the next chapter I would show how everything is wired in the game and what is an extra flexibility to this system. And after that, I would discuss even more interesting setup with 7 power switches. But trust me, at this point it is pretty simple and if you understand 4 switch setup, it is a piece of cake.
Here we are in the actual nuclear factory in the control room. As you can see, here is uh, there are four switches and obviously eight connection points. All connection points obviously goes down and just in a second I will show where they goes for. Uh, except one connection, one connection goes up for my obviously power bank for the backup power. And here we are on the ground level. As you can see, there are seven connections. The eight connection, as I said before, is going up to my power bank. Three of the connections are connected to main power. Obviously, our plutonium sink, our uranium sink, and same goes for the factory. Backup connection obviously is connected to the factory. Uh, but what if I want to actually hook up one of my sinks to backup power? Well, it is pretty simple. You just take out the connection from the main grid and just connect this circuit to your backup power. Simple as that. Now you can operate from the backup power uh, with flip of the switch. Simple as that. So what it is all about 7 switch setup? Well, it is a lot of things that can be automated without physical need to mingle with your fuse box. First and big addition is to separate your power plants from the main grid. Pretty self-explanatory. As another addition, I want ability to shut down waste recycling part of the factory. In the case when you do not use your plutonium rods for power and only sink them, that extra power consumption can be too much. So you can just subdivide your factory power grid into two parts with a simple extra switch. Just make sure that you actually have overflow on your smart splitter to send your nuclear waste into storage. And after all this, we can also add one extra switch that will allow to operate your nuclear power plant completely independently from the main grid. With this extra switch, you can totally restore your backup functionality while staying completely separate from the grid. And obviously, what are the example cases where you can use this knowledge about the power switches? What are other uses outside your nuclear power plant control rooms? Well, for example, you have your top production line, for example, heavy modular frames. You can take the awesome sync setup from your plutonium rods or uranium rods and just place it between your production line and your storage. And now with the flip of the switch, you basically can start producing and stockpiling your heavy modular frames for your personal use. Or maybe you just can flip the switch and start syncing it to get more tickets. And of course, I can rumble about setups like that for ages, but probably each factory is kind of unique beast with unique challenges and unique places to exploit. So if you stole some ideas, leave them down below in the comments and give this video a like. I was Foxy Shanks and have a pleasant day.